I baked you a pie. Oh boy, what flavor? Pie flavor. Hello, Leticia. <laughs> nice to see you here. Okay, I see some people that I know from last meetups. If any of you guys are, are coming back from our last meetup uh, before summer, thank you for following up with this uh, with these sessions of Pi and AI. Uh, we are based in Madrid currently, but we are a remote uh, team. We we work at a company called Playground, and we love to organize these kind of meetups. Now with the COVID pandemic, we've decided to make them online, and now we're starting to reach also more people. So it's been very interesting. So um, Pi and AI, it's all about uh, learning, artificial intelligence, and, and meeting people interested in the same topic. Today we have with us Miguel Angel Begantones. He's a great PhD with a lot of experience in the field of artificial intelligence. He's been a lecturer in the University of Deusto, right, in, in Bilbao. And he's now the head of artificial intelligence in this amazing company called Sherpa AI, uh, which has a very, very impressive technologies. Uh, they, they usually uh, go for, uh, for stretch goals and they try to push the technology forward. And, and every time I, I learn about something they've done, it's usually cutting edge. So that's why we were eager to have them uh, here at Pi and AI. So it's a pleasure. Thank you, Miguel Angel, for coming. Uh, this is the third episode of this series. We hope we do a lot of more, a lot more of them. Uh, thanks to you guys, the ones who come here to, to share your time with us and to learn together. And today we're going to be talking about federated learning and, dif and differential privacy. And before that, as usual, we want to uh, have the award from our main sponsor here, which is Deep Learning AI's uh, CEO and founder, Andrew Ng, also founder of Coursera. So here's the kick of video. And I hope you enjoy it. And just let me know also in the chat if you have any issues with the audio, okay? Because this is the first time we're gonna be using the video now. So let's go. Hello, deep learners. I'm Andrew Ng, founder of deeplearning.ai, and I'm excited to welcome you to our global deep learning community. I know that many of you are here today because you want to break into AI and build your career. I hope that being part of this community will help you to do so. To give you a proper welcome, I'd like to show you around the deeplearning.ai offices and meet some of the teams so you can see where it all happens. Oh, hi, Edward. Um, do you want to tell our friends at Pine AI what you do at deeplearning.ai? Sure. Hi, everyone. I, I make articles and other media that help people learn about AI and help them understand the huge impact that AI is having in the world. Today, I'm putting together the next issue of The Batch, our weekly newsletter, and I'm looking for the biggest stories of the week to keep our readers informed. What's been the most surprising thing you've run into working on The Batch? How much is going on in this field? There is never a dull moment. I, you know, you might think from the outside that machine learning engineers really understand everything about AI, but nobody understands everything about AI because this field is just coming to life right before my eyes as I put this thing together every week. All right, I know you're really busy, so let's get back to it. Thanks, see you later. Let's go meet Kian, who helped me create the deep learning specialization. He's working on an exciting new project. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. So, do you want to tell the people at Pine AI what you're working on? That's true. Um, I'm leading a project for Coursera, uh, focusing on helping uh, people get offers uh, in AI and navigating their career by uh, testing their skills, uh, preparing for interviews and certifying them, as well as uh, matching and referring them to good jobs in AI. That's really cool. And what's the most exciting part of your day? You know, the AI field is new. Uh, organizations and jobs are still misunderstood. So I'm excited to help people understand what different types of jobs exist in the field, uh, what tasks they will work on, and what skills are needed to achieve those tasks. That's really important work. Well, it's nice chatting. And now let's go chat to Odeon, who is on the product team. Yeah. 
do you want to say hi to our friends at Pine AI and let them know what you're working on? I would love to. Hi, everyone. I lead the product team Deep Learning.ai, where we create AI education content accessible to people all around the world. People like you. And what are you most excited about right now? I am so excited to see our community grow and to see how eager people are to learn more about AI. Thanks, Elsa. So, as you can see, our team is working hard to support you and help you learn. It's never been easier than before to break into AI. So if you want to build a career, you can leverage online resources available, including open source code, data sets, papers, and online courses like the deep learning specialization on Coursera. As part of this journey, I hope you get your hands dirty too. Don't be afraid of diving in to build your own project. Or go ahead and try to replicate a research paper that you're excited about. One thing that I've seen help a lot of people succeed is if you can build a community or find a community of fellow deep learners you can meet with and study with on a regular basis. In fact, I hope that this Pine AI meetup that you're at right now will be a good place for you to meet these people. I hope you enjoyed the event today and that you learn a lot both from the talks and from each other. And once again, welcome to the deep learning.ai community. Okay, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Again, let's, let's follow on. I hope you heard it properly and the audio was fine. Uh, now I just want to plug a few of our uh, content uh, platforms. We're, we're starting a podcast. With, we interview people like Miguel, who are uh, very talented and are into AI, very much into it. Uh, actually, tonight we're launching a new episode, which we recorded last week. It's about uh, the privacy of algorithms and well, regarding privacy and regarding explainability of AI, more precisely. Uh, so feel free to subscribe, uh, that helps a ton, and ch check it out, it's just Playground Podcast, you can find it on, on YouTube. Also, uh, we have a newsletter, which we will be very glad to share with you in our next, it comes out every four, 14 days, and we try to sum up uh, our latest, latest discoveries regarding the AI applications frontier. And finally, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at, at playground underscore AI, and we share everything there. So if you just follow us on Twitter, you'll be up to date with, with these meetups, with the podcasts, and with everything. You get everything together here. So without further ado, I don't want to take more time because we are a bit behind. Uh, I want to give the, the stage to Miguel Angel Begantones, our guest today. He's going to talk about federated learning and differential privacy. So it is all yours, Miguel. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'll let it, let it all for you here. Thank you very much, Gorka. Thank you. I'm sharing the screen with the slides. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, great. So thank you very much, Gorka, and thank you very much to Playground for, for this kind invitation to talk today. Um, um, in the in the presentation of today, uh, I divided it in, in, in two parts. In the first part, I would like to give you a picture of the technology that we we, we have recently brings for business to business. Uh, we we have um, we have launched uh, three products, three artificial intelligence products oriented to business to business, and I want to give you the picture of of the three of them. And on the second part of the talk, I will focus more on, on the third uh, product, which is a framework for federated learning and differential privacy. So before that, I'd like to just uh, use a few minutes, uh, just two minutes, to tell you a little about uh, our company and to provide you with some context. Uh, SERPA is a company that is devoted to provide uh, artificial intelligence services for being integrated into your business. So we are focusing on business to business uh, uh, from the point of view of artificial intelligence services. We, we have been known worldwide uh, because since 2012, uh, we, we have one of the, of the best uh, personal assistance uh, uh, applications and probably one, 
probably the best in, in, in Spanish. And, but during the, the last two years, we have been focused on, on providing part of the technology that was supporting uh, this uh, virtual assistant and other applications that we have developed uh, all along the time uh, in, into a series of products for, 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 for B2B. And, and also at the same time, uh, we have been involved in, in developing a framework, an open source framework for data privacy, artificial intelligence services. And we are very proud uh, of being a global leader in, in data privacy and artificial intelligence service. So here you can see some, some the faces of some big, big names in, in, in technology and in business. We have uh, Sabi Uribe Cheverdia, which is uh, our founder and CEO of, of SERPA. And we have some big names like Joanna Hoffman, Tom Gruber, or Duke Solomon, which are the, the living history of, of Apple and Siri. And, and all of them are uh, supporting and leading our, our activities. And we are very proud of them. During all this year, we have been numerously awarded and recognized as one of the leading companies, and the most innovative companies in, in artificial intelligence. And particularly this year, CV Insights uh, selected us as one of the 100 most promising artificial intelligence startups. And it, it's, I'd like to, to, to let you note that we are the only Spanish company in this rank. And we are one of just five European companies uh, listed by CV Insights. So uh, I, I think this is rem remarkable to, to let you know uh, that we are competing with uh, uh, the, 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 the giants of, of uh, technology, uh, uh, companies like Amazon, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and so on. Or at least we are in the same market. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to let you know that uh, our headquarters are located in Bilbao. Bilbao is located in the north coast of Spain, in Europe. Uh, um, most of the, of the members of SERPA are STEM graduates. We have a very high ratio of PhD people. Uh, it's a very international, uh, very heterogeneous uh, team. We have, for instance, PhD, not only from computer science and artificial intelligence, but from pure mathematics, telecommunications, even theoretical physics or linguistics. Uh, and, and, and we think that this heterogeneity is a big part of the, of the value of, of our company. It's, 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 a, it's quite a, a strength of, of our company. Celestino Garcia, who, who has been the, the former vice president of Samsung Spain, is helping us to develop uh, our business to business uh, line uh, from Madrid. And as I said, Joanna, Duke Solomon, and Tom Gruber are supporting us from California. We are also very proud of the strong and stable all along the years collaboration with top knock. Uh, research uh, laboratories in, in Spain, particularly with the Basque Center for Applied Mathematics, the University of the Basque Country, and the University of Granada. So let's start with the technology. Uh, as I said, during the last two years, we have been focusing on selecting a subset of the technology that we have uh, supporting our uh, virtual assistants and other applications like the news recommender uh, system uh, to provide some products for business to business. And uh, this, this July, on July, we announced the launch of these three artificial intelligence products. The first one is focused on conversational artificial intelligence. This is basically a collection of services for creating a speech and test dialogue interfaces to allow businesses to communicate with their users, with their customs in a natural language uh, way. The second one is focused on recommendation and predictive 
uh, artificial intelligence. And, and the goal here is to make easy for you to introduce, to include recommendation and prediction models into your products and services. And to, so, so you, can, you can also offer a more personalized experience for your users and customers. These two products, these two uh, artificial intelligence products, the conversational and the recommendation and predictive AI, are provided as, uh, as APIs, as a collection of software as services. So it's very, very easy, very straightforward for anyone to just use these APIs to integrate artificial intelligence as a service into their products or services. We have also uh, um, launched a third line of, of, of artificial intelligence products that um, uh, revolves around the idea of data privacy artificial intelligence. And, and the first of these products is uh, an open source framework for federated learning and differential privacy. And I'm going to talk uh, um, in more detail about this in the second half of the of the of this talk today first i want to 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 explain a little more about the conversational artificial intelligence and the recommendation and predictive artificial intelligence products but before that let me tell you why do we think serpa provides value value to your business the, the first thing to note is that we provide uh, unique technology, unique services based on the most advanced natural language processing and machine learning models. But we provide these services in a very easy, straightforward way. So it's, 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 it's quite straightforward to adapt uh, these services for your own needs, for your own uh, processes, products, and, and services. We can help you to automate the end-to-end -end process to maintain the artificial intelligence at a scale in your uh, business use case or depending on your devices. And we do this from an independent point of view. And what does this mean? It means that we operate as a, a white level independent service provider. So we are not going to mess with your data the ownership of your data is yours, and we are not going to compete uh, with your business, with your products and your, and your services. There is a main concern for businesses to operate with uh, big companies that are providing services similar to the ones that we offer, uh, because these giants are also competing in their in, in, in this business markets. For instance, it's hard for a car manufacturer that wants to incorporate artificial intelligence into the smart car to 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 do it by relying on these uh, technological giants because they are also building uh, smart cars. <laughs> so we are not going to build a smart cars. Okay, it's not the, our business and. And we are not going to compete. We are a wide level uh, provider of artificial intelligence services. So I, I think this is one of, of our big uh, strengths. So uh, uh, to provide these artificial intelligence products, we, we launched also a portal for developers. So if you go to this link, developers.serpa.ai, you will find there all the information related to these three artificial intelligence as a service products. The conversational AI, the recommendation and predictive one, and the privacy one. So if you click on the learn more uh, button in this website, uh, you can also access to this website from our, our official uh, website, serpa.ai, just on the, on the top right menu. You will find more information. So you will find information about use cases. You will find high level information about how these APIs and technology could help you to add value to your businesses. And you will find as well, a huge amount of documentation in the form of tutorials of API reference or examples for making 
very easy, very straightforward for you to start trying this technology uh, to, to, to develop a taste of it of and understanding how how could this technology technology help to to improve or enhance your your business use cases this technology is for free both apis could be used for free completely for free for no cost up to 1000 requests monthly uh, we we think this is uh, enough uh, enough uh, interaction with the api to develop proof of concepts and to have a good understanding of how the api works to to really trust on that the api is very easy to integrate with your with your use cases and in the case you feel more confident about the value of the technology you can later go to uh, uh, a pro or an enterprise uh, pricing tires but from the starting point of view these two apis uh, uh, are completely all all the services are completely for free for you to try and in the case of the privacy artificial intelligence framework it's not only for free it's also open source so you can use it not only at not cost uh, but you can also contribute to its further development. And now I, I would like to, to go a little more into the details of the, of the two APIs before going to the federated learning and differential privacy framework. The SERPAS conversational API, as I said, it's focused on allowing you to create this and voice enabled uh, communication with your users, with your consumers. So this technology is based on natural language processing, is based on the understanding of speech and text, and uh, providing services to develop a rich and very accurate conversational experiences for your users. The main services offered by, by this API uh, are related to the creation of conversational systems, that could uh, allow you uh, to, 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 to put into your services and products communication between humans and machines through natural language processing. We also provide you with a lot, a, a huge amount of predefined, pre-built domains. Its domains represents a specific area of knowledge or a specific uh, uh, content. For instance, uh, one domain is in the domain of news or the domain of movies, of sports, of weather. Uh, in a few slides later, I will show you a glimpse of the amount of domains that we have already available for you to incorporate straightforward digitally into your services and products. But in the case that none of these uh, predefined domains completely fits your needs, we provide in this API services to help you create your own private domain. And finally, this API also provides services to allow your system, your service, your product to automatically connect and use commands in any electronic device uh, that is integrated with the most well-known Internet of Things providers. So for instance, you can uh, develop a conversational system to talk with your TV or your fridge. And in, in actually with, with any device, almost any device in the market. Uh, at a whole, this, this conversational API provides you with new ways to interact in natural language with your products and services. And we do this, uh, uh, and I think this is very important, maintaining uh, the, uh, your ownership of, of the data and, your, and the personality of your branding. We are not going to interfere with the ownership of your data or with, your, with, with the branding of your uh, uh, processes, services, and products. Uh, we do this as an independent service providers platform. These are some of the use cases that all along the years we have been working with and developing 
uh, based on the services included in this conversational API. Of course, with this conversational API allows to create virtual assistants and chatbots, but you can also create virtual assistants and chatbots for specific verticals like uh, a car assistant, a home assistant. Uh, you can create these assistants uh, to support the activities of your core centers or your customer services uh, departments uh, to provide some automatics and some intelligence to automatically uh, solve uh, questions and doubt in natural language, uh, uh, maintaining the highest quality of services as possible. And very recently, we have been developing a new vertical, which uh, I feel is, is very interesting, that is an intelligent agent to manage our agenda and, for instance, to organize meetings, but not organize meetings, uh, uh, I mean, with all the information. Uh, this agent is capable of optimize the amount of interactions, uh, for instance, with the participants of the, of the meeting, and, and to, to look into the agendas to find which is the optimal uh, date and, 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 and time, uh, and time uh, window uh, to create uh, and to follow this appointment. And, and we, are, we, are, we are very happy with the result of, 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 this, of this scheduling agent. And it has been created mostly with, uh, with the services of this conversational API. Uh, as I promised, this is a glimpse on the on the on the domains on the pre-built domains that we have available for you to try directly into into your use cases. Uh, these are uh, domains of a specific knowledge or a specific content that we already provide for you to use. But I remind you that uh, this API also has services for helping you to create your own domain, your own private domain. Now, the surplus recommendation and predictive API. This API is focused on easily allowing you to integrate recommendation and prediction models into your services and products and to offer your users and customers a more personalized experience because uh, this API provides the capabilities for user profiling and use this user profiling uh, with these recommendation and prediction models to, to provide your users with new services and with new personalized services and, 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 and services, services and, and products. So these are some of the service offered by, by this API. The first one is what we call the custom content recommendation service. And this is basically a set of recommendation models and services that help you to create a recommendation engine using your own catalog of items and your own collection of users. So you provide uh, the catalog of items, you provide the, the information of the users, you provide the interactions of the users and the items, and then you use the services of the API to create this recommendation engine. Okay, so this, this is focused on, on an ad hoc, your, uh, on creating your own ad hoc uh, engine, recommendation engine for your specific use case. But, uh, as same as in the conversational API, we are also providing services for pre-built domains, for pre-built uh, recommendation engines, uh, with content and with models that, we've, that we have been using all along the time in, in our applications. Uh, for instance, to, uh, to create news recommenders, okay? And we are also providing uh, prediction models, and in particular, we are very happy of our uh, prediction models using geolocation. Uh, 
this displaced predictions models allow ones to deduce points of interest from the historical uh, data set of your location uh, data, uh, for instance, from your mobile devices. Uh, you, can, you can deduce uh, using the API which are the home, the office, or other points of interest like the swimming pool, the supermarket, uh, a user usually goes after after office before going home, and you can also characterize these commuting routines all over the 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 week uh, the weekly activities of the users, and then use this characterization of the routines of the uh, space time <laughs> routines of your users to to make predictions about what they are going to do next. Uh, what is going to do uh, the user, where, where is going to, to go uh, given the, the current location and some context aware information. And, and using these services, you can build different uh, use cases. For instance, uh, uh, this displaced prediction model is extremely useful, for instance, for the car vertical. So you can create a personalized proactive in-car suggestions for the users, depending on the different users that make use of the car, depending on where are you located right now with the car, what, which are your habitual commuting routines and activities routines, and, and you can build this using uh, this API. You can also uh, uh, build, uh, as I say, recommendations and notifications in genes with your own custom data, with your own custom domains. Uh, this could be, for instance, uh, very useful for television providers, for uh, music catalog providers, podcasts, uh, wh whatever catalog you have, even uh, for 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 uh, for shopping catalogs for 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 clubs, uh, uh, what, whatever catalog you have, you can make use of these services to, 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 to build a recommendation engine. Or you can use our own recommendation engines to build up a use case of interest for your business. For instance, to, to build a, 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 news, a newsletter for your, for your, for your users. So these two, the conversational artificial intelligence product and the recommendation and prediction artificial intelligence product, as I say, they are APIs that provide artificial intelligence services as software. And I, I want to repeat this, you can try them for free at no cost. Uh, and, and I promise it's painless. Okay, so don't be afraid of the complexity because the API makes it very, very straightforward for you to integrate these services into your own use cases. And you have in the website a lot of tutorials and examples of how to do it. Sorry, so all of them, Miguel Angel, are free? All of these three services are for free? They have yes, they, they are for free up to some limitations in the number of queries that you can do monthly. But there is no limitation in the in the amount of services that you can use. You can use all of them. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that. Thanks. So now let's let's go to the second part of the talk, and let me let me uh, uh, talk a little more about the third artificial intelligence product that we have launched this year, which is devoted to data privacy. It's devoted to 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 provide ways a technology supporting the, uh, the data analytics and machine learning model learning uh, uh, over private data. So this is basically uh, what, what this framework is about. And I, I, I repeat that this is an open source framework, so it's also uh, for free. And, and, and being open source, you can also further contribute to it, okay? And as the, name, as the name suggests, it, it, it is composed of two technologies that are complementary, federated learning and differential privacy. 
federated learning is is a new machine learning uh, paradigm that that is focused on on allowing uh, learning machine learning models allow, allowing uh, to learn these models to train these models but using private data and that means that you don't have access directly to the data okay uh, the, the entity that wants to train the model, it has to do it somehow indirectly because the data cannot leave the private areas of the different data providers, okay? So how is this done? How is federated learning proposing to do this? Basically, what federated learning says is, okay, we have a, a collection of very likely decentralized private data we cannot access. But what, what we can do is we can send some specifications about the model we want to, to, to train to the, to, the, to the different entities, the centralized entities, and let them learn locally, okay? So we, we, we don't ever access to the data. We just tell them, okay, this is what I want to learn, what I want to train. Please train with your own private data locally. And then there is a quite sophisticated mathematical uh, uh, technology to aggregate the local models into a global uh, uh, model and deploy this global model back to the different entities. And this is an iterative process that ensures that every entity, every independent entity will take advantage of what it has been learned on the other entities with their private data and not a single entity will access any any private data but their own so it, satisf it satisfies the two basic requirements it satisfies the requirement that the model needs to learn from as many data as possible and it satisfies the requirement that not entity but myself is going to access to my private data, okay? And differential privacy is a set of statistical techniques to provide an additional layer of privacy. Uh, in the context of federated learning, the differential privacy is used to protect uh, the communication of the local models to the entity that is aggregating these models into a global model, just in case some malicious agent uh, intends to, to infer back the private data from the local parameters of the models. So this differential privacy uh, technology, what it's doing is uh, ensuring that even if a malicious agent captures the communication of the local entities with the aggregated entities and has access to some of the local parameters, it's not going to be possible for them to, to infer back any of the private data this model has been learned with. Okay, so here we have two layers of security of privacy. We have a privacy by design provided by the federated learning approach. And we have uh, an additional layer of privacy to avoid malicious agents to try to attack this federated learning uh, framework. And, 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 and this federated learning and differential privacy framework could be very disruptive in, 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 in the use of data analytics and machine learning models in, in business. Because there are many scenarios right now where it is not possible to take value of, of these technologies, these mathematical models, because of some restrictions on the privacy of the data. These restrictions could be given by, by the data being sensitive, because the data could be about our medical records, it could be about our bank accounts. It could be any sensitive data about us or about any other entity that couldn't be disclosed. 
It could be also that the data is located in data silos. That means that maybe the data uh, themselves don't have sensitive information, but the different entities don't want to share this data among them, okay? So each entity uh, uh, has their own data in silos and they don't want to, to, to disclose it. This could be, for instance, uh, I don't know, different, different companies in the, same, in the same market that want to collaborate but don't want to share uh, details of the of the data that they have okay and there is a third case where this technology could be very disruptive and this given by legislation it could be that by data privacy legislation uh, it is not possible to 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 build businesses around this kind of data analytics and machine learning models because yes is prohibited because, for instance, uh, banks and telecom companies cannot share individual records of their customers. Uh, it's, it's a reasonable uh, legislation, but it, it's also a limitation to the, the development of new businesses. So this, this framework uh, comes uh, to, to enable uh, uh, these business use cases that right now uh, are facing uh, very strong limitations. And here you have some use cases. Uh, its use case is very likely uh, uh, limited by one or more of, of these factors. For instance, uh, the first use case is about diagnosis, it's about medical diagnosis. And, and we are working on a project where uh, several international hospitals and research institutes want to collaborate to create a machine learning model, model to early diagnose uh, some specific rare disease. And since these are rare diseases, there is very little data because there are very uh, a few uh, subjects uh, 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 available. So they want they, they, they want to create together a better model for diagnosis, but by, by regulation, since this is a very sensitive information, the data is in silos and, and furthermore, there is a strong low regulation about sharing these individual records. They cannot share the information. And this framework allows them to build this more powerful, a machine learning model for diet for early diagnostics uh, without uh, without inflicting uh, this regulation so this framework is is enabling them for for building a better diagnosed model the second use case is more focused on, on data silos here we have different bank and financial institutions that want to collaborate to to create a model to identify money laundering but they, they don't want to share the information of their of their customers okay so on one sense is is sensitive information but in one sense is also data stored in silos and the third one is sort of is it's about some very strong limitations that modern companies modern industries are facing right now in what is called the four zero and even the five zero, it depends on which number you are right now uh, in industry. And for instance, imagine you, you have a product that is composed of different components and, 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 and you want to optimize the, the, the way the different components work together to, 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 to enhance your product. But this could imply putting together into collaboration to different providers. And even if the providers are willing to, to collaborate to make your product better, maybe they don't want to disclose their specifications. Maybe they don't want to, to, to provide uh, data about the, the specifics of their components uh, because they are competitive. Okay, so these frameworks uh, uh, provides them the security that they can still collaborate with you in having a better product with their components to a stronger 
their relationships with their customers without uh, the risk of uh, disclosing sensitive information of their components to maybe potential uh, 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 potential companies in the same market. So this federated learning and differential privacy framework is a framework for data analysts and for data engineers to, 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 to develop and, 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 and evaluate their own use cases. But we have also provided a catalog of, of techniques in, in this framework ready for use. So we are providing a catalog of machine learning models. We are providing a catalog of federated aggregation operators of differential privacy mechanisms and many other functionalities like, uh, this is very technical, but non identically uh, and independently distributed uh, mechanisms, uh, the possibility of working on federated and non federated governments, even to simulate uh, malicious attacks by data poisoning, and, and many other functionalities that will come uh, uh, very soon. And uh, together to, to all this catalog, we are also providing a lot of documentation, uh, not only technical documentation about the code, but also tutorials and notebooks exemplifying how these machine learning models could be integrated with federated aggregation operators and how we can, to the, depending on the different models, uh, use a different uh, uh, our respective uh, differential privacy mechanisms to improve the, the, the data privacy. So we have made a big effort to provide a framework that is easy and readily, be, readily usable for, for, for any of you. Uh, we are also publishing, it's already available online, a scientific paper in, in the journal Information Fusion, which is one of the top three uh, journals, scientific international peer review journals in artificial intelligence and information systems, where, where we compare uh, uh, our framework with the few frameworks that exist right now on, on the market. And and, and, and we highlight that this, the strength of our frameworks comparing to these other frameworks is that our focus is on the data analyst and the data engineer. What we want to provide with this framework is the capability for you to build your own use case, to try and evaluate your own case and there are different data privacy configurations with different models, with different uh, governance operators. Some of the other uh, platforms are more focused maybe in one specific machine learning model. Maybe one is very focused on deep learning and they don't pay attention to other, uh, to other uh, techniques uh, on, the, on, the, on the field. Others are maybe more focused on a specific vertical and they are focused maybe on, 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 on banking or on finance. I, I think uh, our vision of, of what a framework for data privacy should be uh, is more appropriate uh, uh, for, for data analysts and for data engineers for a business to business use case. And as I say, the federated learning together to the differential privacy mechanisms provides the, 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 the most powerful state of the art framework uh, for, for doing data analytics and machine learning over private data. But the, the framework is modular. So you don't have to use all of it for your use case. Maybe your use case doesn't need of the federated government. Maybe, maybe your use case doesn't need an extra differential privacy layer. The, the framework as being modular allows you to use whatever it fits your use case. So if you want to use only federated learning, you can do it. If you want to use only differential privacy, you can do it. Even if you don't want to use any of it and just use the analytics, you can do it as well. And just to conclude, uh, at the end, as a summary, uh, th this framework 
is focused on allowing you to simulate real scenarios, to take your use case and to, and to simulate locally in your computer any requirement of federated, non-federated, uh, data privacy configurations and so on, even malicious attacks, okay? And the framework itself is ready to be integrated with third parties, for instance, for, with uh, distributed computation frameworks or with uh, machine learning operations uh, for automatic deployments. And as I said, it's provided as a GitHub repository. So you can just join the GitHub repository and understand the, the, the framework with your own code, with your own contribution. And now uh, I have prepared a, a, bit, a, a, a video record demo, demonstration of how, of how with a few number of lines, you can implement a whole use case, a real use case. The video was recorded in the Spanish, but we had some subtitles in English, so everyone could uh, follow the explanations. So I, I will just uh, start it and, and, and let, you, let you go through it. In this video, we will show how to implement a case of use of the model shared entre various entities using the framework SERPA de Aprendizaje Federado and Privacidad Diferencial. Varias compañías aseguradoras y una telco han proporcionado al analista un conjunto de datos reducido para poder desarrollar un modelo de predicción del precio óptimo de un seguro de viaje. El analista instala el framework en su ordenador siguiendo las instrucciones proporcionadas por SERPA. La instalación se realiza descargando el código desde el repositorio GitHub. Una vez el Para ello, emplearemos un notebook de Jupyter, una herramienta estándar de desarrollo de código para análisis de datos en Python. Lo primero que debe hacer el analista es importar la librería del framework y cargar los datos proporcionados por las entidades. El framework dispone de distintos mecanismos para simular la estructura de gestión de datos de las entidades. En este caso, cada entidad es un nodo independiente con su propia zona privada de datos. Para empezar, consideremos el caso más convencional de aprendizaje federado en el que vamos a asumir que los datos proporcionados por cada entidad son de la misma naturaleza y volumen. La clase IID Data Distribution proporciona las herramientas para definir la forma en que los datos privados van a federarse, es decir, distribuirse y gestionarse en las zonas privadas de cada entidad. El analista va a entrenar un modelo base usando una regresión lineal. Para ello, el framework ofrece la clase Linear Regression Model, que permite encapsular modelos de regresión lineal. El analista debe definir también el tipo de agregación federada que va a usar. Para ello, el framework facilita varias técnicas a través del paquete Federated Aggregators. Para entrenar el modelo con los datos privados federados, el analista debe definir un gobierno federado, que requiere del modelo los datos federados y el agregador federado que han sido previamente definidos. Una vez definido el gobierno federado, el analista puede correr distintas rondas de aprendizaje federado con una simple instrucción de código. El modelo federado puede compararse con los resultados que se obtendrían en un entorno no federado, es decir, si los datos no fueran privados. Este es un paso recomendable para evaluar la bondad del modelo con privacidad de datos respecto a un modelo de referencia entrenado sin los requerimientos de privacidad. A continuación, el analista va a proceder a reemplazar el modelo de regresión lineal por un modelo más sofisticado usando redes neuronales y aprendizaje profundo. Para ello, el analista solo debe modificar el constructor del modelo, utilizando la clase Deep Learning Model que encapsula un modelo de redes neuronales proporcionado por una librería de terceros, en este caso TensorFlow. El resto del código permanece igual. El framework también permite aplicar de forma sencilla transformaciones a los datos. En este caso, el modelo de redes neuronales recibe los datos en un formato diferente al modelo de la regresión lineal. Los métodos del módulo Federated Operations permiten implementar este tipo de transformaciones de forma sencilla en un entorno de gobierno federado. Una vez definidos los modelos base, el analista procede a simular un entorno más real, en el que cada entidad dispone de datos de distinta naturaleza o volumen que el resto de entidades. 
Para ello, el analista utiliza la clase Federated Data, proporcionada por el framework que permite definir estas diferencias en la producción y gestión de los datos privados de cada entidad. En este caso, el analista define que cada entidad proporciona un volumen diferente de datos. Como el volumen y calidad de datos puede diferir de una entidad a otra, conviene usar un operador de agregación que tenga en cuenta estos aspectos. De nuevo, el framework ofrece varias posibilidades para ello. En nuestro caso de uso, el analista decide seleccionar un operador que pondera las aportaciones de cada entidad en función del volumen de datos aportado. Finalmente, el analista decide añadir una capa de privacidad extra para evitar que un agente malicioso que intercepte las comunicaciones pueda inferir datos privados de una entidad a partir de los parámetros del modelo enviados al gobierno federal. En este caso, emplea una técnica de privacidad diferencial apropiada para la naturaleza de los parámetros del modelo, denominada mecanismo laplaciano de privacidad diferencial. La privacidad está gobernada por dos parámetros, Max Sensitivity y Epsilon, que en conjunto determinan el balance entre la precisión en la información enviada y la seguridad de que los datos individuales estarán protegidos. El analista puede estudiar las condiciones óptimas de privacidad en función de los requisitos de privacidad y precisión del caso de uso. Como hemos mostrado, el analista puede implementar y evaluar el caso de uso de forma local en su ordenador bajo múltiples configuraciones de modelos y privacidad, de forma sencilla usando el framework SERPA de aprendizaje federado y privacidad diferencial. So, thank you very much for all of you that come, come to here to the, to the end of this talk. Uh, I hope I convince you that, that, uh, that this technology could offer value for, for, for you, for, for your use cases, for your businesses. And, I hope that, that I have encouraged you to, to try it. As I say, uh, it has no cost, <laughs> which is a very important uh, aspect of it. But also I promise you that it's painless, that there is enough uh, tutorials and examples in the websites uh, to, to, to make this contact with the, with the different APIs and with the uh, federated learning and different privacy framework uh, quite easy and painless. So thank you very much, and Gorka, if, if it's fine for you, uh, we, can, we can try to solve uh, doubts or questions that, that could have appeared. Yeah, great, thank, thank you, Miguel. Yeah, we have two, two very interesting questions. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I wanna um, uh, say sorry for being a bit later than, than we expected, and thank you very much for that, for you guys who are staying here. I really appreciate your interest. And I hope you are getting the best out of this. So let's, let's uh, go for the questions. There's just two of them for now. First one comes from Sebastia. Thanks, Sebastia, for participating. And he wants to know, could you specify the good things that Sherpa's software compared to PyDP uh, uh, from OpenMind? So that's the first thing. And also, uh, there's other frameworks like Facebook Crypten that haven't been considered on the chart. Would you explore other techniques like homomorphic encryption and secure multi-party computation? Multi-party computation, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the first one is, is the one by Google, uh, the first framework he was asking about. Yeah, the first one, uh, it's called, uh, well, just wait a minute. Uh, Sebastia, I think you're around here. I can just give you. Yeah, yeah. Other yeah, ones. I can speak. Sure, go for it. Yeah, I know. Krypton uh, is from, from uh, Facebook. So, it, yeah, it was I, 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 I don't know that. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, know that. that I think learning a fashion or uh, SMPC approach, but definitely, I mean, th th there's a, a bubble around that as well, you know? So, people are talking about Krypton uh, as well. So, what, what are you, your two cents on, on these frameworks? Uh, and also open minds, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, the, the one by open mind is very focused on on, on specific deep learning models, and this is not what we want to do. Of course, deep learning models is now very trend, but it's not. I, I will say that I don't know the the the, the percentage of 
use business use cases in industry, for instance, that make use of deep learning is close to zero. I mean, deep learning is an amazing technology. Right, right. Yeah, but it's not for everyone, <laughs> you know? So we, we want to provide a, a, a privacy framework for, for as, as possible for everyone. Okay, so we are not focused on a single machine learning technique. And I think this, this framework is very, very focused on, 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 on this kind of techniques, which are amazing, but it's, 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 it's sometimes it's, it's, it's an overkill. Uh, sometimes uh, it's, it's, not fit, it's not fit for, for, for the business use case, this kind of models. I don't know very much about the Facebook. It, it, it was very recently released. I know the, 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 the people on my team is looking at it. <laughs> so, so maybe we need to make an update of the of the paper even before it is released. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I can tell you uh, almost nothing about it right now. So I'm 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 uh, I want to catch up with it, but I I I. I, I <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 it's, 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 it's yeah, really one one one. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really brand new. I, I'm not sure what to what to say uh, uh, because I can say something, but but I I I I haven't gone deep into it, so I'm not I don't feel confident to to say something specific. <laughs> I, I'm maybe a little a little conservative here, but I don't want to say something that is not true. Awesome. Okay. And, and for for your second question. Yeah, uh, there was a second question I wanted yeah, to ask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was what I, what I was going to point out. He also wanted to know if you would explore other techniques like homomorphic encryption and security. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. This is something that will come in the next releases very likely uh, on, on the first, yeah, on the first queue of, of 2021, particularly for the secure multi-party computation. Uh, we, 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 we think this could be uh, this could be a technology that allows us to go to a peer-to-peer -peer scenario in the in the in the federated government. I mean, the, the let's say the conventional scenario in federated learning is that you have multiple decentralized entities providing uh, private data, and then you have one entity that is. Uh, um, Aggrupating, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the local models. Okay, to is building the global model from the local models, but it, it has not to be like that that way. Its entity could be at the same time data provider and aggregator. Okay, and if you go, if you if you move this to to an extreme point, then you are in a peer to peer federative learning scenario where right. its entity is at the same time data provider, private data provider and aggregator of models and we we feel that the secure multi-party computation is going to be key in in these scenarios at least for for real for real use cases for for physical use cases that require of distributed computing and homomorphic encryption is 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 an amazing research avenue but up to now, we feel it's still uh, not doable for, 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 for actual use cases. I mean, the amount of things that you can do using homomorphic encryption, for those that don't, don't know about it, homomorphic encryption is, the, the goal of it is to allow mathematical operations between encrypted data. So imagine you want to soon up two numbers but you receive the numbers encrypted, okay? You, 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 you can't disencrypt them, but you have the mathematical tools to still make the, 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 the sum of the two numbers and to, 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 to output an encrypted number that is the right summation of the two encrypted numbers. There's actually an example. I just came up with it in Playground right now regarding the pandemic. Uh, I just want to bring it up because I think it's very illustrative. Uh, and it's, we, we looked into it from Playground to apply it to the GPS coordinates of users 
All right, so we were exploring a, if we could do an algorithm which could estimate your exposure to the, to the virus, to the COVID-19 virus. And for that, best thing is, you know, a GPS position, how many people have gone through those places, but we wanted to keep it private. That's like a perfect application, but it was a bit too green still. Yeah, 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 that's the point, that's the point. We are, we are very excited about, about it, but we feel it's still at, at a very low technological mature level to, 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 you know, to make it a priority. For, for resources allocation. <laughs> to the next question or yeah. just another one more? So uh, thank you, Sebastian. Let's go now with a DG. He asked, uh, or she asked, thank you for your presentation. Does federated machine learning in such aggregation consist in some sort of meta learning, say uh, learning how to aggregate? If so, I, in the customer side or already provided in the service as pre-learned pre somehow? Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand uh, Here, let me, let me the just second part, but the first part definitely. You, can, you could think of it as a meta learner. It, it, indeed, uh, aggregating the local uh, models is not the only way of doing it. We are also, for the next releases, uh, providing uh, other kind of mechanisms for federative learning based on, on, on instead of aggregating the, the parameters of the local models to perform the, the you know the stochastic gradient of the in, inside the learning uh, in combination locally and globally in, in, a, in, a, in a federated way so it's like like going one step deeper so i think the the second part was if so in the cast by the way dg you can you can just uh, talk if you want to to clarify the the question uh, or whatever feel free to to jump uh, with your audio and yeah so uh, the question is like in the is it in the customer side or or is it provided in the service as pre-learned yeah it's, it's providing the service i mean the to be honest is is the the aggregating entity that must define uh, which is the model and how the model is deployed into the local entities providing the data and then how the local models are being aggregated and this is in the case of the conventional end-to-one uh, horizontal uh, federated learning, okay? Uh, <laughs> there is a lot more to talk about it, yeah. but uh, for instance, in vertical learning, where the different uh, data providers entities could have different subsets of the future space, then it's a little different. In the case where you don't have an end-to-one configuration, but maybe you have one, more than one uh, aggregator. It could be also slightly different, but not too much. But we are also thinking about the idea in, in, in a more in a more peer-to-peer -peer scenario where, where, um, where you could try to aggregate different models. Okay, okay. And, but okay, these are just ideas going on because the, the field is, is yeah. very, very brand new. We have a third question here from, uh, well, we've got more from Sebastian, but I want to go for, uh, to uh, admin, which is a different uh, guest today, a uh, different attendee, and we will go on with the next one. So he wants, uh, he, he wants to know, he actually or she uh, texted me privately, and he would like to know if the Sherpa system and API has also tools or method implemented to take care of the ethics in the response of, for example, improved bias in data training. So we're talking about bias and, and ethics in, in, that, in that aspect. Is that somehow contemplated on your API or still on the roadmap or something else? Uh, let's say there is part of it, but not, to be honest, uh, completely from that point of view. It's, it's more from a technical point of view in the sense that in a non id scenario, which is, should be the most uh, the, the, the most realistic one where it's data provider has their own particularities. So, so if you put all the data together, maybe you are in a, you know, identically and independently distributed scenario, but taking its, its data provider on, on, on their own, uh, they are not ID, okay? 
So we have tools to assess and to evaluate the effects of this non-IED, okay? And, and somehow you can also relate that to, to biases in the, in, the, in the model learning. And, and, and you can think of some of the op uh, aggregating operators that we provide as, as, as operators dealing with bias in the model learning. But this is an interpretation of a more mathematical, technical uh, focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. This, there's an interesting question from Sebastian here. Well, Armin said, uh, well, you can read, thank you for the answer, Miguel, an organizer for the ethics. Well, thank you, Admin, for participating uh, here. And there's this question from Sebastian. He says, it has been pointed out that privacy is against an attacker intercepting the communications. But what if nobody trusts the aggregator? For example, if several hospitals uh, want to train up in a federated fashion, but they don't trust the central aggregator server. Yeah, that's, that's why a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, configuration is, is, is very... Is, is, you know, it has a great potential. Because in, in that kind of a scenario, every entity is at the same time a data provider and an aggregator. So I, I hope at least you, 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 you trust on yourself. <laughs> but of course, if you don't trust the aggregator, this kind of end-to-one -to -one configurations makes no sense. So somehow, somehow the, the, the business use case, uh, uh, should provide this trust. Great, great. Okay, uh, and then finally, last question. We are still 15 people here. Thank you very much for staying this long. I think this is the most interesting part. The questions to me are the best because it's where we can talk a little bit and bring the best ideas out. Thank you really very, very much for, for participating, guys. So, and then we've got the quiz after this one. This is gonna be the last question. Any more questions, you can ask him directly, Miguel, in his uh, email. You've got it on the screen, so just write it down and you can uh, feel free to ask any questions. So last question, and then we go with the quiz. What do you, from Sebastian, again, what do you think will be the first adopters of federated learning? Uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting, interesting question. Where's the money? Uh, Where's the money? Who can we sell? Yeah, that's the, that's the point. That's the point. I, I think the, 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 the first adopters are not there for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first adopters will be academia, of course. And very likely uh, entities in, in health, like hospitals and, and health research institutions or laboratories because the, the use case for them is pretty straightforward and it's going to solve a lot of pains and troubles. They are having to, to, to start thinking about data analytics and machine learning models as as real scenario for diagnosis. But they are not here for the money. <laughs> they yeah. are not here for business. Makes and sense, from, yeah. from the business point of view, I think banking and telecommunications are, are, are verticals that for sure, at least they should be interest on. For insurance companies. Yeah, yeah. Telcos, banks, insurance Regarding companies. I've seen this also in fraud detection uh, scenarios where a given, a given company knows, well, they share their experience. You know, they've got different edge cases and that can train better the model. Of course, uh, um, I, I think all these companies that have that have uh, a lot of uh, customers' information in individual records, but they cannot use them by law, by sensitive data, by any constraint that they have, or they should not be <laughs> doing it. <laughs> uh, they 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 should be interested in this kind of technology. It's 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 like and, and this is why this is why the, the 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 big tech companies are so interested in this kind of technology because they have this this kind of data, and they want to do business with this kind of data. And they are already in troubles for doing business with this kind of data. <laughs> to, yeah. Well, thank you very much. I would love to stay here forever, and we've got to finish at some point. So let's go for the quiz. We are fourteen here in the room now. So let's see who listened uh, better here and who's got better memory. And also, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. And now I'm going to the pleasure is is ours here. I'm going to share my screen. 
So I think I'm going to swap now and uh, just let me know if you can see my screen now. It says quizzes in, in, in big, in the middle. So this part of the, of the meetup, the, to wrap up, it's kindly sponsored by Clubes de Ciencia España. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a nonprofit organization which uh, takes care of uh, every year uh, around the globe, making these workshops for young students going to university uh, and helping them to uh, do some networking with some people who, are, who can help them to boost a little bit their career in science and technology and it's all on profit so uh, kudos for that and they are also going to sponsor the the price of the quiz so thank you very much uh, club de ciencia and now can you see the new tab that i just swapped where you see uh, a link and a code on the screen do you see a a, a, a page where it says go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the the code or not i need some answers here Miguel, do you see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sir, blue. Okay, okay. I'm gonna paste the link. Uh, oh, there's another here. I'm gonna paste the link on the chat. If you are just lazy like me and you just wanna copy it, there you go. You just click the link and you will be uh, joining the, the, the quiz. You can do it from your smartphone, ideally, because then you can look at the screen or also on a different tab on your browser. You just need to click on the link. I'm gonna click here to check it. We've got Sebastian here. There you go. That's my boy. And Sue joining also. Great, so it's working. DG, three participants already. Admin here. These are these are the champs, the faster ones. <laughs> I'm 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 betting for Sebastian. Sebastian, I, I put my money on you, so you better be fast here. Just a quick reminder. Uh if you if you answer fast, it's just four questions. So time also gives you points. Um, oh, don't drop out, it's gonna be super fast. It's just four questions. So it's four, I think we're 10 in the meeting. Uh, if anybody has problems joining, just let us know in the chat. Otherwise, we'll just uh, run the quiz with uh, four participants. So if anybody wants to talk because has problems joining, just talk now or we'll be gone forever. And we can start in three, two, one. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, it's five. We've got a new one, I think. <laughs> yeah, five participants, last minute. So first question. Sherpa has been considered by uh, Crunchbase Insights as one of the 100 most promising AI startups for 2020. How many other Spanish and European companies are listed? There we go, I think we have two answers. Three, four, five, there we go. Let's go for the next question, okay. And the leaderboard already, after the first question, Sebastian, that's my boy, there we go. <laughs> and Sue also doing great, DG, Admin and Juan Pablo, there you go. Next question, which are Sherpa's business-to-business -business AI platforms? This is an easy one. This is a fast one. You gotta go fast in this one. But not too fast because then you can, you know, there's some tricky questions, answers too. Miguel made it a bit tricky here. Okay, next question. This one is already answers. Two questions left. Let's see how is the leaderboard going. Okay, there goes Juan Pablo very fast to the front of the leaderboard. Okay, okay, next question. Which is the main objective of the federated learning and differential privacy framework? This, uh, this is, a, this, uh, to me, I think this was the, the most difficult one when you pass me the questions, Miguel. I tried to guess them and this is the, the one I got wrong, I think. <laughs> okay, there's just uh, one participant missing. There you go and before the last question, let's check how is the leaderboard going. The leaderboard first leading, Juan Pablo was leading and he's still there, followed by DG and by admin. Okay, let's go on the last question, 50, 25 seconds. Which is the pricing of Sherpa's three platforms? How much do you have to pay for using? I think I helped you guys a little bit with this one in, when I intervened in the talk, I hope so. Okay, so I think we've finished. Uh, and, and let's see who is the winner. So we've got a we've got podium here. See, this is the, the questions. And now, just to finish, I do I want to end the quiz? No, I want to know who who won. Now, next one. Sorry, it's the first time I I oh, here's here's the letterboard. I think. Wait, just a second. Okay, yeah, we finished. Okay, yeah, I want to finish the quiz, and I want to see who won. Okay, next question. Oh, this is the demo effect. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Wait. 
do you guys see uh, like the results of the leaderboard in your in your phones? I, I saw it. No. it was Juan Pablo, I think. Yeah, it was right. He was he was Juan Pablo. He was a winner, and I wanted a podium. Like a very little, but yeah, I think it got stuck somehow. I don't know why. Well, let me just there's like uh okay whatever let's let's give a give applause for Juan Pablo who was the winner I will download the, <laughs> the, the, the quizzes later so thank you very much uh, we will be giving a, a prize for Juan Pablo uh, which is a, a 25 euros uh, gift card for Amazon so you can just pick whatever you want there and and thanks for coming I would like to to wrap up by thanking also uh, the the audience uh, first of all and then Miguel of course thank you very much and our sponsors Deep Learning AI and to you and to Playground and Inteligencia Artificial Más Humana and hope we see you in the next one remember to subscribe to everything we talked about just follow us on Twitter and, and keep an eye on AI and stay awesome okay thank you very much have a great week bye bye, bye. Don't you stop, don't you stop